Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about a somewhat hypothetical concept known as a quark star or a quark planet. Let's talk a little bit about what it's all about and welcome to What The Math. And so today we're going to be talking about a quark star or a quark planet and in one of the previous videos I actually made a video where um, you got to explore a system and pass by a quark star all in 360. If you haven't seen this video you can check it out on the channel but today we're actually going to talk about what exactly is a quark star or a quark planet, how it may look like but most importantly if there are any in real life out there in the universe, or at least in our galaxy. We actually are going to be taking a look at this using Space Engine, and I'm also going to show you one of the quark stars that I created somewhere right here in this system. There's a little object right there in the middle that is technically, or at least hypothetically, a quark star. Now, first of all, let's talk about what a quark star might be. A quark star is essentially uh, the next stage of a degenerative star um, in between a neutron star and a black hole. And so here actually is one that was kind of created using the space engine. This is probably not a very realistically looking object, but this is sort of the scientific interpretation of what we might be able to see um, in this particular system if there was a quark star or a quark planet here. Now, we've actually detected at least one object in our galaxy known as PSR B1828-10 um, that was thought at some point to be a quark star and a quark planet orbiting one another. Basically, it was supposed to be a, um, an object that, instead of becoming a neutron star, even went further and created this very unusual matter known as quark matter. And as it sort of happened, um, because of some uncertain parameters, a piece of it separated and created a quark planet. And this is actually what I decided to do here. I took a planet, and specifically here, this is actually the oldest planet known to us, known as the Sela planet, and I converted it into a very, very dense, very extremely small object, but yet super massive object. And by all definition, this would be a quark planet. We're going to approach to it um, and I'm going to take a look at it a little bit closer. But the thing is, as you approach it closer and closer, the game is actually going to start slowing down dramatically. And mostly because of the effects that are used in Space Engine. I'm also, I'm also going to slow down time here, just so you can actually see it in real time. And so what you see here is an extremely dense, extremely massive object right in the middle with a huge amount of uh, magnetic effects and it basically contains um, unusual matter known as quark matter and so here is sort of a picture of what you might see on the inside now there's actually nothing to see per se because it's basically almost a dot on the inside um, but it is something that we think it might exist so basically uh, we're pretty confident there are things like um, white dwarfs out there that usually contain um, electrodegenerative matter. We also think that there's neutron stars that, that contain uh, neutron degenerative matter. But if those neutrons actually fall apart, and if they end up um, separating into subatomic particles known, uh, known as quarks, in other words, if those uh, neutrons basically disintegrate and turn into unconnected quarks, you would get a quark matter or a quark matter based object. And in this case, it seems to be a planet, a quark planet. Now, if I approach it any closer, you won't really see anything else because there's really nothing on the inside. It's essentially a tiny dot. It's a tiny, very, very dense, yet very massive dot, several times the mass of Jupiter. Now, whether the, this object exists or not is very speculative, but we do think that it's quite possible. So, if an object is just a little bit over the mass of uh, two masses of our sun, yet not as massive as maybe three masses of sun, um, it wouldn't really become a black hole just yet, and it would be too massive to be a neutron star. So just maybe it would actually become a quark star 
or quark matter object. Now, all of this right now is very theoretical. And let's actually take a look at it in better um, spectrum here. And all of this is still not highly likely, but since we were able to find black holes, since we were able to find, ne find neutron stars, and since we're able to find pretty much every other theoretical object we kind of thought was only theoretically possible, nothing is really stopping us from finding a quark star. And what happens inside of this object and what happens around it would be actually still very, very um, speculative. But one thing is certain though, if it does exist, and if it is possible to create these in a lab, um, we might be able to actually, uh, first of all, understand the creation of the universe a lot better. But second of all, we might be able to find a way to somehow harness the energy of these sometime in the future. So right now we have nuclear reactors that can harness the energy from uh, essentially nuclear atomic reactions, so combining atoms. But if we were to be able to somehow separate matter into quarks, which has been obviously done in the lab, if we were to basically somehow create a quark reactor, we would be able to create um, relatively safe and clean energy that will be producing about 10 times, if not more, of energy as a nuclear reactor. Now, it actually has been done in the lab, and there was even a study that showed that it's possible to create a quark reactor that would be extremely efficient. But the people behind the study got really, really scared because they knew that just like with the atomic energy, someone would eventually create a weapon. And creating a quark bomb would be devastating to humanity because the energy produced here is dramatically higher. But nevertheless, being able to create something that produces quark energy and something that can actually be harnessed and used for, let's say, space travel, potentially would not only change humanity, but maybe even take us to the stars finally, and maybe even to an object like this. So we can actually take a look at it and study it in a little bit more detail. Now, for now, though, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And I kind of wanted to just introduce the concept about which we know so little. And hopefully in the future, when we actually discover a quark object, I'll be able to speak more about it and possibly teach you the actual math behind the, uh, the generative matter, but also show you how uh, various quarks interact with each other. Because um, as you saw in the picture I showed you previously, quarks actually do have very, very unusual parameters. And they, they do basically combine into um, atoms and atomic particles and are essentially inside of us. We're all made up of quarks, not just atoms, of course, but also quarks. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. And thank you for watching. Let's get out of the system and go and explore something else. Anyway, space out, and as always, bye-bye.